Hi everyone, my name is Cathy Bond and I'm the Education Support Officer for Central Gippsland Health Service. I have an administration background. I'm self-taught with all computer things. Went from selling them and not knowing anything about them in 89 to using them. Back in uh, 2009, we introduced Moodle throughout the health service. It's been put in through our Learning Services Unit, which is a uh, unit for education right across the health service. It has to cater for people from the CEO through to clinical to non-clinical, administrative staff, cleaners, workers in the laundry. There's a team of educators and then there's me who they nicknamed the Moodle Queen. We have a team of um, educators that look after undergraduate nursing placements. We have a graduate nurse program but with between 16 and 20 grads every year. We have a transition nurse program, postgraduate programs. We have an orientation program for all new staff. Then we have all the mandatory competencies that all staff members must complete every year. And that's a huge task in itself to get compliance there. We also have to cater for continuing professional education for our nursing staff and our medical staff. Back in 2009, our CEO, Frank Evans, called the educators to a training room and he said, oh, Kath, you come too. I'm going to show everyone about Moodle. And I said, what? What's Moodle? And he said, oh, come and find out. So he started teaching us about the basics of Moodle and we were all sitting there very glassy eyed going, what are we supposed to do with this? Halfway through that session, Frank says to me, by the way, Kath, I'm going to make you the administrator. And I said, the what? I had no idea what he was talking about. And for probably six months, I didn't know what he was talking about. I sort of stumbled my way through and played around with it, but we didn't really do anything with it. So the manager of our unit says, next year, this is three months out, next year we're going to run our graduate nurse program on Moodle. I went, uh, okay. We had a folder that looked a bit like this. It was about three inches thick. It used to take me a week of photocopying to put it together for the grads every year. And we literally dumped every piece of paper onto Moodle. All the quizzes that they had to do were all essay questions. We had no feedback. We had minimal forums, just the standard one that comes with every course. We didn't use it. And we had lots of complaints. Complaints from the grads, complaints from the educators, complaints from the nursing unit managers who were looking after the grads. Nobody had any idea what to do with it or how to use it. So we sort of stumbled our way through the year and it was absolutely atrocious. We had things that people were answering and we were losing them. They couldn't, they'd get halfway through something and it would drop out. They hated it. So we had a real problem on our hands because what the grads were talking about throughout the whole health service was that they didn't like Moodle. We had to change that. So at the end of that year, we took a big step back. We began on a learning curve, which looks something like this. We've gone up and down and round about. Then we'd take a few steps forward and then we'd fall over again. But we keep going and we keep improving. The biggest problems that we had was we didn't talk to anyone. We didn't tell anyone what we were doing. We didn't educate anyone on how to use it. We just said, here you go, use Moodle. It's fantastic. And they went, yeah, right, not. And then we started overthinking it. We were trying to get really complicated with things, which made it even worse. We had way too much text. The educators loved it because they could put in all their information and say, right, I've done my bit, now it's up to them. 
they're the professionals, they're the learners, they've got responsibility for their learning. So it worked for the educators initially, but certainly not for the staff. We took another big step back. We had to. It was failing miserably. By this stage, we'd uploaded some of our mandatory compliance training and we weren't getting compliance. It was a problem. People were saying, Moodle doesn't fit with us. It doesn't work. I hate it. And we just kept saying, but you have to use it. That's what we're doing. So we, we took that big step back and we got rid of the box that we put everything into. And we got rid of the box and we started thinking, well, hang on a minute, we need to make Moodle fit us, not the other way around. And so we do. We never accept the statement that Moodle can't do that. We've found ways around all sorts of things. We use core Moodle with just a few extras. We can do rolling enrolment of a sort that works for us. We have over 1,300 staff. I don't want to be enrolling 1,300 staff in about 30 competencies every year. It would be horrendous. So we found a way around it. We're continually evolving. Sometimes that's by choice in the way we do things. And sometimes we're dragged along with the upgrades that Moodle has. Sometimes they're great for us and sometimes they break things. But we still make it work. We went from this. This was the front page of our Moodle. It's a bit boring. It's a bit overwhelming. It doesn't really tell you much. It just looks awful. So we went from that to this. And that's all done on the core Moodle. They're just icons that I've made. And all that you saw on that previous slide is now hidden underneath it. And it's all done with a link. Suddenly, the staff like Moodle. It's not overwhelming. They can find what they want to find. It's really self-explanatory. We went from this, this was what our grad program looked like. Scroll of death, people getting lost, couldn't find what they were supposed to find so they didn't do anything. And we went to this. And it's all done with links and orphaned activities. So underneath all of that is a whole lot of work. To make it work simply, there is always a lot of work in the background. But now we have compliance. We have people completing everything they're supposed to complete in that program. When they click on one of those rotations that they might be participating in, they're confronted with a book. And that's the only thing in there. And within that book, there'll be their rotation objectives, which is a link to a quiz. They go back to the book, they can submit how they completed their objectives. They go back to the book, they can give us their feedback. They go back to the book and they can tell us what we can do better. And it's all done with links. This is one of our new courses that we've put in. And this is using a new plugin that we're just trialling out where people can book into a practical session, which was one thing that we found really was a problem for us. People have to do practical components along with the theoretical, but we needed it to be graded and we needed it to show up on their reporting. That plugin that we've got is gradable. It shows in the gradebook and the way we do our reporting, we can make it show on our reporting. Our typical course looks like this. So every piece of compliance training has four standard things. It has a book, it has a quiz, it has a feedback, and it has a certificate. And it's all done with conditional activities. Every year, a new topic is created for that year. And all I have to do is duplicate the activities and relink to the book, relink to the quiz, 
relink to the feedback and the certificate. So that's what it looks like underneath. You can't get from one to the other until you've done the previous and that's the link. So every year there's a new topic and that creates our rolling enrolment for us. We use the forums now a lot right across the hospital. Every ward, every unit has a forum. It's set up as a course. It only has the forum in it. We use it as a communication pathway. A lot of staff might never set foot into the hospital. They work out in the community. This way, they know what's going on and we can include them in our community as a hospital. They can find out that um, a certain person has been appointed to a position. They can find out that the social club activity is on next week. They can find out about their salary packaging. They can send messages to other staff if they've come across a problem and they're starting to use it more and more. The nurse unit managers have a very transient staff that might work 0.1 or 0.2. So they might never see them if they're working night shift. They can still get the messages out about changed policies and procedures through the Moodle communication pathways that we've set through. The feedback module features heavily in our courses. We have to evaluate everything we do and we have to be able to prove that we're evaluating everything we do. So for us, feedback is a mandatory item. Our courses aren't completed unless the feedback is submitted. So our reporting, which has been customised for us, is dependent upon that feedback submitted trigger. Now it's all good and well to have the feedback, but what do we do with it? It can just sit there, but no. We actually allocate courses to our team of educators and they drive the improvements constantly by looking at the feedback. And now that people realise that their feedback is actually anonymous and I'm not trying to track down who said the nasty words about Moodle, they're actually putting in what they really think and we're getting some really creative ideas about how to improve Moodle. The change of culture and attitude didn't happen overnight. It has involved education and education and more education. And that means I need to be out and about. I run monthly help sessions in our computer training lab. And those sessions are there for any staff member across the three campuses to come in and know that my time is available for them. I go out to the other two campuses so that they see my face. And once they have seen me, they're more likely to ring me if they have a problem. And they do, they do ring. And I give them one-on-one -on -one help. I write frequently asked questions documents and I upload them to our policies and procedures database. And people can find the help that they're looking for. The availability of me and the other educators has been key in changing the attitude. The feedback module has been another key change where people actually use it and get their point across. The staff, there's many staff who have never even turned a computer on. So when you sit down in the computer lab and you tell them to turn it on, they go, how do I do that? You want me to click, what's a click? What's a mouse? And you have to start from the very basics. So the simpler our courses are, the more likely we are to get engagement. When we actually sit one-on-one -on -one with these people that have never turned a computer on and we get them through their Moodle courses, they are so over the moon and they go tell everybody, Moodle's fantastic, I've actually done everything I've got to do. And that's creating a wave through the organisation where people are starting to become really engaged with it and they feel empowered when they see their reports saying complete, 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 instead of all the not yet completed. The key that we have found is to keep it simple. A lot of the people that use Moodle in our organisation don't know how it works. I don't know how it all works. I trip and stumble with Moodle all the time, but it's a learning process for me too. So we've kept it simple. We try to make it easy and we maintain the flow. We use some extra tools to mix it up and make it a bit more interesting. And they're tools that I've got from coming to Moodle Moots. Articulate Storyline, 
and Powtoon. Powtoon is actually how our uh, CEO does his welcome to all new staff on Moodle. We have to be supportive and we have to be passionate. When I'm passionate about Moodle, people catch that and they want to improve it and make it better and use it. And the ideas now that are coming up to put on Moodle keeps me busy more hours than I care to think about. I could work 24 hours a day for the next six months and I could still not have everything on Moodle that the staff want on there. I do other jobs as well. This is only part of what I do. So I like these, these couple of quotes that I've found. Keep it simple. I have that sitting beside my desk so that I remember. Don't get too tricky. I try to put myself in a student's place and, or a staff member's place and say, what am I going to see if I've never seen this before? And if I can't explain it simply, then I don't understand it well enough. And that's something that I'm working on a lot with Moodle. There's a lot about Moodle I don't understand, but I'm learning. A conversation I had with Dom from Pukanui who hosts our Moodle for us some years ago was, oh, you need to make some changes in the CSS. And I went, the what? And then he says to me, oh, go into the HTML, you'll be able to fix that. And I went, huh? How do I do that? So a massive learning curve for me as an administrator trying to run Moodle. But since 2009, I think we've come a long way. We're still on the upward curve and we've got a long way to go, but we're not doing so much of the twirling backwards and forwards now. So Moodle is like art. You have to work hard to keep it simple. There's a lot of hard work goes into the background of our courses. The staff think it's ever so simple until they come and work in our unit for a little while and then they go, oh, I get it now. But it's all, um, all coming together and it's actually changing the culture and the attitude of our staff. So thank you. My name's Cathy Bond. If you want to contact me at all, I'm at Central Gippsland Health. I'm on Twitter as Mrs underscore Bondi. <laughs> um, my husband's known as Bondi, so that made sense. Um, and if you want to catch up with me later, I can give you email address and phone numbers as well.